January 19th, 2026. Guys, just a quick video. We just had impact, and it looks like it's about two and a half hours early. But I said it was moving fast, remember? And what you're looking at is a full day's chart, and this thing really just a flat line. It was right about here in the last video, but it just continued. Very, again, it's the tsunami effect, the beach uh, showing up when all the waters are pushing out. Anyway, before the wave hits, but look right here. We're going from uh, right in here. We've been in the 290s all day, 292 kilometers per second, which is fast. But suddenly, we are hitting, a, this is 1131 kilometers per second. And they were saying 700. Remember in the uh, CME tracker chart we looked at? I didn't think that was going to be accurate. So we have impact. Now the, look at the bottom. The temperature is jumping too of the, uh, solar, of the CME. Now what we saw here earlier today before we saw the solar wind in, impact was the plasma density get very high right here at 2572. That peaked. And at that point, the uh, magnetics in our shields went crazy. Now, what we again, I mentioned this earlier. You see these purple shades in this area. On cell phone, it's going to be probably hard to do it. But those are the opening times when the shields are open and this energy is bombarding the planet. And it just closed back, but look how rapidly it did it. Both of these, um, the different uh, magnetic configurations in the shield are on top so it's technically closed in a way but anyway uh, we saw all type of uh, stuff happening as the density hit before the solar wind but guys let's look at what this means 1131 kilometers per second and uh we're gonna have to watch for quakes this is strong it's powerful this is a brick wall from right there now let's before I change, before I change this, I want to go to the last say two hours, and uh, this is it. Two hours ago, and then this is just in the last, uh, I'd say, less than maybe thirty minutes. Anyway, we got two seventy. Bam! Look at that, eleven thirty-one, and out of sight with it, and the temperatures rising. The, uh, we're in bright blue skies right now, but I was looking at some of the satellite images earlier because of this big cold weather system that's moving in. But uh, the, up in, it was already getting dark up in the northeast this time of year. And that, the, that is a good thing. But what I was talking about earlier is that if it came in at 6, remember, then a lot of the eastern U.S., it would be not directly facing the sun at that time. But it's here. It's here early. So we're going to see effects across the U.S. And the longer it lasts, as the earth rotates, the more pressure will be put into the, on the west side, and which it is now, but it go, uh, moving across the Pacific. Again, you're talking about Hawaii, Alaska, then Japan, Kamchatka. All of those areas will be affected before this is over with. But let's look and see how many miles per hour 1131 kilometers per second is. And like I said earlier, this thing's moving faster than that what they thought it was, and it's going to be more powerful. 1131 kilometers per second, we convert it to miles per hour, is 2,529,974 miles per hour. Imagine that 2.5 million. It, you really, it's hard for the human mind or most minds to fathom that speed that we're being hit with right now. And I don't think it's a good time to be out in the sun if you can help it because of the x-rays and things like that and the, uh, the way it can affect your heart, migraines, all kind of ailments. But also, you just don't need the radiation. We're getting hit pretty hard. You saw how long the shields were open? That's not good. Now, space weather is saying the CME has arrived. A severe storm is underway. Arriving earlier than expected, the CME struck Earth's magnetic field today at 1930 UT. That's a universal time. The impact, which has just happened, 
The impact has sparked a G4 class severe geomagnetic storm, guys. It only goes to G5, but they're saying now, like I did earlier, watch for it to become a G5. One day they'll start listening to this old fool. Sky watchers at all latitudes should be alert for auroras after local nightfall. There's a chance that the storm could escalate to a category G5 extreme in the hours ahead. They're saying it was a very fast CME. Like I said, they would just listen. The CME that struck Earth today crossed the Sun-Earth divide in only 25 hours. That's fast. For comparison, most CMEs take three or four days to get here. I think 24 to 48 hours right in there. But again, just if it's a slow release or slower release, then it's going to take longer time. This was too fast. That's why I did the countdown showing 17 hours. It moved 93 million miles with the uh, proton storm. Anyway, it says the high speed of the CME at 1,660 kilometers per second places it in the top few percent of all CMEs observed in the Soho era. This must, we're going to have to go back and check it, guys, because what I was seeing was 1131 right there, remember? So let's, I'm going to put this back into our calculator, and we're going to look at it. Now, we got, you got information that comes from a satellite and the, the Discover satellite, so we'll take a look at that. First, let's look at 1660 kilometers per second. That 1660 KMS kilometers per second is 3,713,000 miles per hour. No wonder it's the strongest in at least 20 years. And now that I look at it, guys, I see what happened. Let me make sure I'm not on top of the letters here. Um, notice they had this escalated. A lot of times you'll see it peak at, or you'll see the chart be at 600 or 700 as far as what you're looking at, and they'll change it depending on what they're expecting. But they didn't expect it to go above 1,200. So in this area right here, possibly at the 1178, this one is one of the newer ones, that it went above it. So we're at 3,700,000 miles per hour. I don't, I can't remember that. Again, I'm getting old, but I can't remember that. You guys, look at this, the change in this map. Look at that right there. It's saying that we're in a G4 right now. That is very strong on it. And there, we'll take a look and see if they've increased the spread of where the auroras are going to be. And again, you can, your cell phone can be used to get the glow that your eyes can't see and a good camera. You can maybe look that up online if there's a certain setting on your phone if you want to do that. But they're talking about now, like I did earlier, Alabama. Watch for it. Not only that, um, something I'm going to shut up about this, but something else we talked about today was I said, do you remember the, there was a big flare when Elon was starting out uh, getting big with the satellites, and it hit so hard that it he lost a lot of them. Most of that flight, they'll send out, there'll be a big train of them each time a rocket goes up and they release them. It got most of those and it's happening. They're concerned about it happening again. They mentioned it, and I read it in a different article. I don't remember exactly where it was about an hour ago. They're concerned now because it's going to increase the drag on the satellites, the solar panels on them, the space shuttle, and it could push them out of orbit, deorbit them completely, um, and have electronic damage to them. And if that happens, you may not have much control over them at all. Now, when we looked at this chart this morning, this is not a G4 magnetic storm. It was an S3 radiation storm, but now it is a S4. Look at that. Look how fast it's climbed from the normal. And that's why I'm saying it's not, if you can help it, avoid the sun right now. It's dangerous. And quickly, let's look at, Soho Lasco 3 again. Remember when we looked at it today, we were still involved in this solar storm here. And it looks like we still are timestamps at the bottom. And when we get to the 18th, at 18, 18, remember that? That's when it left the sun, the X flare. But uh, there it comes 17 hours later. We're getting bombarded. Remember that? And in those last frames, we're still getting bombarded. So that's telling me. 
we still have that much energy a million miles from our planet, but it's moving very fast. But it is, a, like they said, it's going to be a long storm. This will be the last thing I'll show you guys. I didn't want to make it any longer than I had to, but from looking at it this morning, the only new earthquake activity is along the uh, top or the northern sections of the Ring of Fire. From Alaska, you see the red dots over to, to Kamchatka, Russia. The largest today so far has been the 6.0 uh, down in uh, New Caledonia, right there. But the right now, the pressure seems to be from here to here, and it's just getting started. Now, remember, our satellites are early warning systems, so the, the timing on the satellite is just a little bit of a heads up, not long. And it, at this speed, probably 20 minutes at the max before the impacts on our planet. So right now, this is where we're seeing it. But all of this is exposed because it's, again, on 351 here, sun is off to the right a little bit, but it's bright, sunny, blue sky. So we are fully exposed here in south or central Mississippi. And again, that's going to, all of this as Earth is rotating this way is going to become involved with whatever pressure we get from it and we're starting to see it but uh, again you can all of these links are on our website bpearthwatch.com go down on the left you'll find the soho the sdo images the earthquake information space weather solar ham and um you, they're there they're free you don't have to do anything but go in there and look at them study it and uh, if you're interested in this type of stuff now the other thing that i'm kind of been looking at and it's kind of been all over the press most of you are aware of it that in Minneapolis uh, it was actually in St. Paul in their twin cities but Don Lemon had uh, it looked like in the beginning he had walked into a church it was a white bap no it wasn't a white Baptist church it was a Baptist church there in St. Paul and uh, led a group of uh, protesters that came in there and harassed the heck out of them, disrupted the services of the church, had the kids crying. Uh, they had to stop services and then started yelling at all of them, telling them they were fake Christians and all of this because they didn't believe, because of ICE. And they had been told by somebody that they, the, someone in that church, I don't know if it, one report said it might have been the preacher, or another one said it was somebody else there that were affiliated or were on the side of ICE. And it, man, it lit a fire with the uh, Department of Justice. And we may be about to see some big things going on, but what has happened, and I may do a video on that, maybe go live and we'll look at some of the information after a while, but um, Don Lemon, it turns out, knew all about it beforehand. And they, it went from being a lesser charge of what's called the face law or the face bill to the KKK bill. And that's a federal offense. And they got all the people that walked in there. They got all of their information. The, uh, our, our assistant attorney general, just under, uh, Pam Bundy, uh, Miss Dillon, she, uh, came on, X and did a pretty good report about it. She said her and Pam Bundy, I think, were flying from, they were in the air when they got the reports. And now they're finding out how far that Don Lemon was in behind it. And again, he could get life. But they're going to get the other people too. And it's all coming to a head right there in the Minneapolis St. Paul area, the ice situation and all. But this looks like it's gotten so many headlines that there's no way to ignore it. And the way that our assistant attorney general was talking, by next Sunday, you won't have to worry about it, that in a church in St. Paul, Minneapolis area. They're really hot about it. And they're talking about locking Don Lemon's butt up because he needs to be. He's used his, he got, I guess he got fired from CNN a while back, but he's used that um, fandom now to create chaos it used to be just pure out lies now it's lies and chaos and they're coming down hard on him anyway guys 
Keep an eye on Stay Out of the Sun if you can. Keep an eye on the different links. Solar wind, That if it gets much worse than that, I don't see any way we can avoid tectonic pressure and possibly damage to satellite. And I, I would not doubt reports coming in from some of the air traffic uh, people that uh, they're having GPS problems, things like that, guys. But again, we're watching it. You watch it. It's a heads up. Be safe.